Let's talk more about it, the implications of it not being called a full budget with Ollie Bartram, senior economist at the Institute for Government. Welcome, thank you for joining us. Morning. So if it was a full budget, it would be accompanied by a financial assessment by the Office for Budget Responsibility and there's some disquiet around the fact that that isn't happening. Can you just first of all please explain what is the Office for Budget Responsibility and why was it set up? Yeah, of course. So the Office for Budget Responsibility is the government's official forecaster and it was set up in 2010 essentially to provide an objective assessment of what was going on in the economy and what the economic impact of certain policies were. The problem that it was set up to solve is that before 2010, the Chancellor used to produce his own forecasts with the assistance of Treasury officials. Um, but these forecasts were often too optimistic. They thought that growth would be higher than it turned out to be. The economic impact of policies would be greater than it ended up being. So governments would end up borrowing more than they expected. And essentially, this damaged the fiscal, fiscal credibility of the government. So the Office for Budget Responsibility was set up to sort of provide an objective, impartial assessment of what was going on in the economy, how much the government is going to borrow, and whether it was going to meet its fiscal rules on debt and uh, borrowing. So how do you see the significance, then, of this going ahead today as a mini-budget without that accompanying assessment? Sure. So we put out a uh, comment uh, only yesterday saying that actually we think that this is a quite symbolic rejection of objective scrutiny from the government. They are, as, as you said, announcing historic increases in borrowing, not only in the short term, but permanently. We think we're going to be borrowing £100 billion every year, even after the short-term energy price guarantee has unwound. Um, and the government is banking on tax cuts to deliver the growth to pay for that. Now, most economists and the OBR would probably be included in this. Uh, doubt that that will work. So it appears as though, we don't know that this is the case, but I think the most obvious conclusion to draw is that the OBR would have delivered a message that would be unhelpful for the government's narrative. So they're being sidelined. So the government said previously, or at least Liz Truss said in the leadership contest, that, um, and, and immediately afterwards, that the reason for proceeding in this fashion is to hit the ground running and that there will be a, a full budget later in the year we're expecting in November, although it's not been confirmed, yeah. and that at that point the OBR analysis would be likely to be included. Do you doubt the government's commitment to the OBR? So we haven't had a clear statement either way, so we can't be sure. A Treasury spokesperson has said that the OBR will be doing a forecast along with the full budget, but we really need to hear it from the new set of ministers. At the moment, it's not clear that they support the OBR. At the moment, it's not clear that they're open to that sort of objective scrutiny. We really want to see a commitment to that today um, and a commitment to have a full objective assessment of the public finances at the big budget uh, in November. In terms of the politics, are we in new times? Is this an ideological mini-budget fiscal statement, um, the likes of which we haven't actually seen for some time? It's certainly a very significant change in shift in economic policy within the Conservative Party. Uh, so certainly throughout the 2010s, they prioritised fiscal discipline, getting down the deficit, keeping debt under control. Mm -hmm. We're now seeing a government that is willing to take very big risks in terms of the public finances in order to try to deliver growth. Now, to a lot of economists, that's certainly welcome. A criticism we've often made in the past is that uh, the governments and the Treasury aren't willing to take big spending risks in order to deliver growth. But we're usually talking about temporary borrowing, so just borrowing for a couple of years to finance a project that might deliver growth permanently. But instead, the government is implementing permanent tax cuts that will lead to higher borrowing indefinitely, permanently, which would put the public finances on an unsustainable footing, um, we think. Uh, it, it, 
the plan may turn out to... It could work. It, 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 may, it may well turn out to deliver lots of growth, but the evidence certainly doesn't support that tax cuts would deliver that kind of growth. So we're seeing, yeah, a, a, a real change in approach to borrowing, a real change uh, in the amount of risk that this government is willing to take in order to deliver growth. Um, and I think we broadly welcome that change in stance, but the specific policies they're going for, we're not so convinced by. Ollie Bartram from the Institute for Government, thank you very much.